Oh yeah, we're doing some heavy duty trucking today and we've got two contenders and they're both heavyweights and they're about as equally matched as possible. In this corner, we have the Ford Super Duty putting out, oh my God, 860 pound foot of torque. And over here, it's the Ram with the Cummins putting out 865 pound foot of torque. That is about as close as you can get. And all this excitement for oh, an MPG test. That's right. We're gonna find out which of these two heavy duty dualies will tow our Bronco with the best MPG. And that is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Truck. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner we have the Ford F-350 Super Duty King Ranch Dually, of course. And under the hood is a power stroke that puts out 860 pound-foot of torque and 440 horsepower, which is better than the Challenger, which is this Ram Laramie Longhorn. Also uh, 3,500, very comparable, with a Cummins under the hood. And this Cummins puts out 865 pound foot of torque and how many horsepower Andre 385. 385 horsepower so more torque less horsepower but both of these trucks are about as equal as you can get except for the axle ratios we can't help that sometimes those are impossible to get so the question is which of these two will tow the Bronco better and which will be the MPG champ and that is coming up right now This cap on this diesel in this Ram 3500, they put the DEF cap in next to the diesel cap, which I like because that way you can fill it up with the pump. And a lot of times they have islands that are set for DEF now, where Jim, you got to do it under the hood and lift the can up there. But they didn't really make this hole bigger. Like Ford actually made a bigger hole, so they put CNG or DEF in there for diesels. So everything's kind of in there really tight. And this is a capless, which capless works a lot for cars capless on a diesel I worry about because you get in a dusty situation with your farmer rancher construction and I would rather have a cap making sure I didn't get any dirt in that fuel cap but you know that's how it works. Hey Kent that uh, DEF is pretty small too. Yeah it is and so you know you don't have a whole lot of room to get your deaf nozzle if you're using the nozzle from the island or if you're using a tank you you know it's it's crammed in there pretty tight I guess it works I just like a little more room. Yeah just don't put it in the uh, diesel hole. That'd be bad. Yeah, Don't put it in the wrong good. hole, Andre. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, are we done yet? No, no you got, got nothing in there. Look at that. <laughs> oh, now you're dribbling, Andre. Oh, oh. Hey, this is terrible. Would be good, you know, if we fill up the, the terrible. next truck and see how the, the difference between the two. Let's see. It's all set. We're all, all set. I gotta push the button. I didn't get this in here. That was a lot. That was long on that yeah, click. That yeah, that was. That was a long click. All right. So there we go. We are rolling here. Oh, hey guys. Hey. What, what are we oh, doing? Oh my goodness, we got a full crowd here. Yeah, let me introduce everybody. Because this is a very heavy duty truck, as heavy duty as they get, the dually, we're gonna load them up as much as possible with people at least. So I've got uh, Kent over here, myself, Andre, and our photographer Tommy in the back seat. And we are about to do our MPG run now. We are towing the Bronco. Yes we are, with that load trail tilt trailer. Yes, and the reason we're towing the Bronco is because we thought about towing the half track, but we're not sure we can get that again. And we want to compare, obviously, as many uh, dualies as possible. The Bronco is ours, the Rollo trail, uh, Trailer is ours, 
Did I say that right? Low trail? Yeah, yeah, low trail. That's right. Yeah, so we want to be able to repeat it. Th that's why we're pulling it. Andre, how much does it weigh? I think trailer and Bronco is about 7,200 pounds, maybe a little bit more, maybe 7,250. Yeah, and then add us in here. So yeah, that gives us four some, people. At least four people. Some heavy duties, yeah. Heavy duty guys, so probably around 1,000 pounds. Obviously, this can tow a lot more but this is an MPG run and we figured that dualies are towing machines so we wanted to tow something on this MPG run we didn't, we didn't want to do it empty now after you start this we have to reset it to zero okay Andre you have a new app that's going to exactly tell us how far we're going it's the usual run but we're going to be more precise with this app yes so I have an app here on my phone yep um, it's telling me that we were at about 5200 feet of elevation right now okay so cool all right that's a good mile stuff. high you got your Starbucks? I got my Starbucks, I got my Trekker gloves, I am ready! We <laughs> are ready to rock and roll! <laughs> right. You know, we, we should kind of talk about uh, why we're doing this. Uh, and the reason for that is obvious because the government doesn't raid heavy duty trucks. That's true. <laughs> the EPA leaves them alone. Yeah, and so we're doing something that's very repeatable and that is a highway loop. Yeah, and we're also removing a lot of the variables, right? So right now we're pulling onto the uh, side street and to get on the highway. People love that Bronco, just got a thumbs up. Yeah, again. <laughs> My but death light, but when we are on the highway, we set cruise control and the driver is out of the equation. You know, the driver is steering, but you know, we're, there's not, you know, there's no traffic, you know, so we're running at 65. All right, gentlemen, so we've got about uh, 40, how many miles, Andre, is it exactly? About 43.6. That's what that's what we've measured using the truck. So we got about 43.6 miles of uh, trucking. Round trip to go. Beautiful day. Gorgeous Sunshine. Day. You can see the mountains. And the question is, which of these two dualies is gonna have better fuel economy? Anybody taking bets? Hmm. Mm. Mm. Well, Ram yeah. versus Ford. So we got an F-350 yeah. with a Ford power stroke. You think it's going to be Ford? I think Ford will beat the fuel and the fuel mileage. By the end of this merge lane, let's hit 65 and set the cruise. Okay, now, oh, Craig, so I need to get out of this lane though or we're going to not be able to use the cruise. Set it for 65? Yeah, 65. Okay. By the way, I've got the numbers here. Um, this, there. That's this good. truck starts at 54000 but when you add the uh, options, it uh, as tested price of 69915 and of course, if you look right there, you've got NA, NA, NA for fuel economy combined, fuel economy city, fuel economy uh, highway. And we're about to find out highway. Now, a lot of you are wondering why we're doing um, highway and why we're going 65 and why we're not going faster because a lot of places obviously you can go faster. But here, I'm going to try this lane. We can do 75, but the reason we're doing 65 is because I think that's a good number for an average number that people drive around America. Some people yes, can't go 75. That's true, that's true. And you'll see that with semis. Now in Colorado, you know, we can go 75, you got 80 in Utah, you got 85 in Texas. And the truckers, you'd always tell by the fuel mileage, they were all used to, in Colorado, would be driving 75, 80. When the fuel crisis hit, you know, in uh, 2009, they all backed off. So you'll see a lot of semis now going 65. And that kind of tells you what's going on with fuel prices. But uh, yeah, I think that's a very good average, 65. California is 55, so I'm so grateful I don't live there. And this truck right now, we're at 65 miles an hour. And we're under 2,000 RPM. That's the sweet spot. Even in a gas engine, if you can be under 2,000 RPM, that's where your best fuel mileage is possible. So we're running this with the load at the place where it should get uh, very good fuel mileage. We'll find out. All right, guys, we're going to uh, shut off the cameras now, and we're going to get back when we uh, hit the gas station. And we're going to give you results, so don't go anyway, because results are coming up right after this. Yeah. We've been running our GPS, so yeah. we should have a distance. And the distance is actually on the uh, bottom left. Okay, bottom left, so it says 43, and the truck says 42.8. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're 0.2 off. Uh, from the computer to what the GPS says. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. You know, but all this, of course, affects uh, the MPG. Not not hugely, but, you know, there is a little bit of uh, give and take here. So we're about 
about 0.2 difference between what the truck says and what the GPS says. The truck says 43.3, GPS says 43.59 right now. Uh, we're up oh, 43.6, it just shifted over right there. And we've got some other numbers. Average speed was 54 miles an hour, um, and our altitude is uh, 5190. 5190, basically a mile above sea level. All right, let's go fill it up. I got the uh, you got money. credit card. Cool. Yeah. All right, one more click. One click. Well, that was hardly any fuel. Okay, the air is out. We'll do one more click. Two Very clicks. Good. And what's the number? It's three gallons. 3.070. 3.070. Day, isn't it? Wow. Should wow. we tell them the number, Andre, or should we not tell the number? <laughs> I think the point is of telling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about the scenery. No, no. Okay. You, you've got, you've done the math. So, what is our, what is our official MPG for the Ram with the uh, Cummins? Cummins and the 410 rear end. Yep. Um, dually. Yep. So we took 43.6 miles. Yep. Divided by the gallons we just got, which yep. is 3.07. Yep. 14.2. 14.2 wow. and the 14. truck said it was 12. 12 point something. 12.3 yeah, I believe, yeah. Two off. So um it's a high percentage off. So the number calculated number was higher. Interesting. Interesting. Now the question of course is how will that compare with the Ford? You're saying the Ford's gonna do better. Well, well the Ford has a 373 rear end. Yes, yeah, I think it's gonna do a better, but that's a very good fuel mileage right there for a dually. And with a uh, 7,300 pounds yeah, behind us, I don't right? Know, I don't really remember, but I, I, I'm guessing the Ford's gonna be a little better. And you know, guys, getting exact matching uh, axle ratios is almost <laughs> impossible, so we do the best we can. So coming up next on the fast lane truck, come back when we run the Ford and the same same route, the same day. The same gang, and we'll find out which of the two trucks is better pulling the Bronco. As always, this is Roman and Kent, and over here, and Andre saying thanks for watching, and check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, real world MPG reviews. Ciao! Do you know how many miles you get on a on a fill up of uh, DEF? How far will it go? Do you know? I have to look up in the book, but yeah. when it's with a with a trailer on, it's like a third of what it is without a trailer. It sucks the fuel. It sucks the DEF when you're loaded. That's just how it works. You know that's urea, right? Yes. So you could just pee in there. <laughs> well, kind of urea. They feed the cattle. It's protein, you know. And, and this is the problem. This has a lot of water in it, so you got to be careful about you know trying to store it and freezing it, and it doesn't you know it's like gas. You can't store it very long. So you've got to be careful what you do with it, and then you know the the tanks themselves, the nozzles going into the tank, they move around a lot to keep it from freezing. They have a whole uh, theory behind that. All the manufacturers, when they use their def tanks, it's not a straight shot in there, so you got to kind of trickle it in there to get it clear full. We're empty, aren't we? We are empty on diesel and on the. Uh... And that's another point with this Ram. This Ram used to have a normal size fuel tank when they put DEF and stopped using their other systems for diesel scrubbing. They only have a 32 gallon tank. That's the smallest of the big three. You got a big dually pulling a big trader, you need more than 32 gallons. And a def gives you a little more, but it doesn't make up, you know, say six gallons. Even though you have a five gallon def fluid. And that little Eco Diesel 1500, which I love, has a seven gallon tank. The little one has a seven gallon tank, the big one has a five gallon tank. Explain that to me. You're Must frustrated, I can tell. <laughs> it's a consumer thing. They don't want the consumers to have to put death fluid in it and get frustrated about the whole diesel experience. And they know the big boys will have to do it anyway, so it's prob that's probably why they did it that way. But I'd rather have a seven gallon tank on this.